Hello. I'm uh, I'm just going to try what I did last week and, and read from the Daily Telegraph, but the paper version. And let's start with this. Now, we, you've seen this. It says here, Johnson ramps up pressure on EU. Now, look, when the Daily Telegraph says that, because Boris Johnson is a big hero to the Daily Telegraph, Look, I get the Daily Telegraph. I like the Daily Telegraph. I'm not criticising it, but of course, they're always going to put the best gloss they can on what Boris Johnson does. And uh, this is what they're saying. And then at the end of the article, we've got this. So this is what they say. Boris Johnson is preparing to impose full customs and border checks on all European goods entering the UK after Brexit. Uh, I, I don't know what they mean by after Brexit. I think we're supposed to be Brexit now, but maybe he means, you know, in December next year. After Brexit, in a ramping up of pressure on the coming EU-UK trade talks. So that's his starting position. And, and that's good. I mean, that's, that's what he should be doing. But this is why he's doing it. As Britain approached its departure, the European Commission presented it with a bill for £1.9 billion. That is extra. A recalculation, recalculation of Britain's dues owing to its improved economy and VAT receipts. So what they're saying is, you're doing better, so we're going to punish you. The demand was sent to the British Embassy to the EU and the government has been notified. EU sources said the bill was for 2019 to 2020. So we'll have next year's bill will be 2020 to 2021. Britain's payment to Brussels for 2019 was nearly nine billion pounds. Um, if the figure is similar to this year, it could mean Britain paying up to 10 billion in what could be its final payment to the EU. All right. So the, I did say in a previous video that I thought that the EU was going to be trying dirty tricks. And this is, this is what they're doing. I wonder why that stuff is here. Let's turn up. Ah turn my screen down and uh, there's yeah less reflection of my glasses there so uh, yeah it says it says here on an inside page here adieu to old friends and pay us one billion pounds and that's the beginning of the eu's dirty tricks and so johnson is well, responding in kind. Uh, now, here we have something about... Let's see if I can find it. Just a minute. I might cut this off to to find it because you don't want to hear paper cracking too much in, in front of the microphone. Ah, here we are. Yeah, it was just there. Brexit 50p coins costing, oh, how much was that? I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Uh, £1,000 sell out within hours. They've come up with a, you know, a gold mint of uh, Brexit 50 pence coins. And they'll be collector's items, I suppose. The commemorative coins, which were produced in a limited edition, sold by the Royal Mint for £945 each, but were sold out and uh, they're probably going to be changing hands for a lot more. And that reminds me of uh, the, the um, Brexit 50 pence piece, which a lot of Remainers have said they're, they're not going to touch the ordinary currency. And they're going to, uh, some of them said, we're going to make a swastika on them because, you know, if you believe in Brexit, Brexit you're obviously a Nazi. And I want to tell you about Nazis because 
of this. Expats angry at losing vote in French villages they help keep alive. A lot of British people bought farms in France and started farming and, and living there, but they kept their British citizenship. Now, because it takes up to two, I, I don't understand this. It says here it takes up to two years to get French citizenship if you're British. If you're just off a boat uh, that's crossed the Mediterranean, apparently you get citizenship straight away. Or oh, maybe I'm wrong there. So anyway, these British people who've taken up residence in dying French villages and have rejuvenated them are not allowed to vote now, now that they're not in the EU. The interesting thing is that the British government Nazi horrible Brexiteers have, have not modified the law in Britain. So any foreign resident of this country from France or Germany or Holland or whatever can vote in municipal elections on the grounds that if they're residents in a town, they should be able to get some say in how that town is run. So who's the Nazi and who's being the spiteful one? The French have just ditched the British. They're just, they're just taking out their spite on people who've come into French village. I'm not saying it was altruistic. They uh, could get land quite cheap because the countryside in France is depopulating very quickly. And that's because of their social policies and lack of transport. OK, but talking about 50 pence coins reminded me of this. You see this. This is a two pound coin. Now, it's something we uh, my one of my sons and I noticed when it came out. There was there wasn't there weren't any two pence coins in Britain until relatively recently. And then they came up with this design, which is supposed to be less easy to forge because there are two pieces of metal welded together or however they do it. To begin with, when they first started making them, people kept finding coins with the middle with the middle bit having fallen out. But they seem to have sorted that one. But we never really needed a two pound coin. You know, there was an expression in in Britain, and I think it's the same in America. You know, as in America, it's phony as a two dollar bill, isn't it? In Britain, it was as phony as a two pound note when we had pounds in uh, in paper money, which we don't have anymore now. They came out with this two pound coin saying, well, you know, people were using pounds too much and they wanted to make it easier for people. But my son and I noticed that this coin is strikingly similar to a euro. I'll try and find the euro uh, picture of the euro coin and I'll put it up here so you can see it. And it seemed to me that there was a little hanky panky going on here. The British people were very resistant to adopting the euro, the euro, the European currency and an attempt. Uh, they, they tried in the 90s and it resulted in disaster and they uh, they haven't tried since then, which is good because it's enabled us to get out of the EU with far less aggro than it would for uh, Spain, perhaps, or Greece. But it looks to me like either a civil servant or the minister uh, himself or herself was keen on the idea of Britain eventually drifting into the euro. And so they decided to make this coin which would get people used to the euro look, the euro idea. And I, I definitely think that was a secret agenda. Uh, and I'm very glad it doesn't work. And maybe it, it will be interesting to see how these coins shape up in the next few years. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they disappeared. And a new two pound coin was minted, which was did not look like the euro because we're going to have trouble now with people passing euros. And the other thing is 
that they might just withdraw them altogether and say, well, there was no need for them and they're expensive to make because of this double metal thing. It would not surprise me at all. So watch this space. And if it, if it does happen, write in uh, to the comments on one of my videos and say, you were right, Demi uh, or Granny, whichever channel you're watching. Now, yeah, this is this is really very frightening. Doctored audio evidence used to damn father in custody battle. You know about deep fakes, don't you? You get a few words and then the computer can simulate the voice of whoever's been talking. Well, I think I'm going to read this more or less completely. Deep fake audio was used in a custody battle to try to portray a father as threatening. A family lawyer has revealed as he warned that doctored evidence is being submitted to courts. Byron James, a family lawyer and partner at Expatriate Law, an international firm, said that voice forging software was used to make a fake recording of his client threatening another party in a dispute over their children. In what's believed to be the first reported case of its kind in the UK courts, Mr James said, it is now possible with sufficient content to create an audio or video file of anyone saying anything. I believe that Jordan Peterson actually sued some uh, website because they deep faked his voice for reading out. I think it was something fairly innocuous, but of course it was a very dangerous precedent. Deep fakes use machine learning and artificial intelligence to create sophisticated, plausible fake footage. The technology is available to anyone and there are step-by-step -step guides on the internet. So I won't read all the... OK, the English court system requires parties to submit their evidence prior to hearings. However, the family courts, which are notoriously secretive, are under pressure to get through hearings as quickly as possible. They are... Family courts are full of injustices. And uh, that's a system that definitely has to be They're very secret. They can't be reported in the press. So there's no control. The, 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 the idea was that it wouldn't mark the children in such in cases of custody battles and, uh, and, and abuse and that sort of thing. So there was a justification for it, which seemed reasonable at the time. But what's happened is people are being tried and convicted in secret and sometimes hideous injustices are happening. He says that, that this, this lawyer said that a lot of judges are in their 50s and 60s and not particularly tech savvy. Unless you're aware of the possibility of something being fake, it's difficult to know. Mr. James said his client, the father, in a custody battle, was accused of threatening their children's mother over the phone. He said he was adamant that he hadn't said it and couldn't explain how they had a recording. And you see, it was disclosed before the hearing and introduced as evidence, and he was shocked. Mr. James added that his client insisted it was not him, despite agreeing that it sounded precisely like him using words he might otherwise use with his intonations and accent. So we started looking into an explanation and luckily we were able to get the original file, got it exported, looked at metadata and saw that it had been manipulated. The judge was really shocked. It would never have occurred to him to look into that. Yeah, do you remember there was a Star Trek uh, <laughs> sort of prescient. There was a Star Trek episode in which Captain Kirk was supposed to have killed a crew member by, what, voiding part of the ship of oxygen in an emergency, but before, but while he knew that there was somebody still in there. And this person had simply messed around with the video record. 
Uh, and we all thought that that was something that would only be able to be done in 250 years' time. Well, it's here now. Ah, and the BBC. Traditional radio is out of date, claims BBC chief. He said, people don't turn the radio on and just listen to it all day anymore. So you can't be sure of your audience like you used to. People would turn on Radio 2 or Radio 4 and just leave it on and listen to whatever was there. But now they listen to podcasts and that sort of thing. Times, they are a changing. I wish the BBC would take that more seriously. And let's get one more thing i don't want to make this video too long yeah the trump impeachment trial has wound up what a do what's going on with you guys in america there i don't understand it it was obviously not going to go anywhere that's i'm trying to fold this up so i can hold it up to the camera it was obviously not going to go anywhere it looks like, here, I want to get my hand up. It looks like you, the Democrats have gone completely mad. I mean, impeachment, uh, uh, Trump may or may not have been trying to gain some sort of advantage, electorally speaking, but even so, that is hardly high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, you know, uh, sort of, it's not like, it's not like, for instance, Obama sending suitcases full of money to the Iranian regime. Uh, suitcases of cash, you know, just bundled up notes like some sort of mafia payoff. And I'd call that uh, a crime more worth. And then telling people it leaked out. So people found out about it. If, if that leak hadn't have happened, nobody would have known. So keeping that a secret from the American people, I'd say, was getting round laws they had already made about um, sanctions and embargoes. And wouldn't you say that was a, a crime against the American people? Something the American people had specifically voted for in that they voted for these lawmakers and the lawmakers had made this law. And I'd say that was worthy of impeachment. Not a word. Oh, no, the newspapers just thought, oh, oh, you, you scoundrel, uh, President Obama. Naughty, naughty boy. Don't do that again. So here's the Donald Trump. Donald Trump has unleashed attacks on his potential Democratic presidential rivals. I can't see that there's even one who's a presidential rival at the moment. Now his impeachment trial appears to be nearing an end. The US president described them as left-wing extremists. Well, there's been some disturbing stuff about Sanders. Uh, it's not Sanders himself, but he seems to have attracted people who are not very nice and not particularly American in philosophy either. There's a new scandal, scandal, you know, uh, a project Veritas recorded some another Bernie Sanders worker of some sort saying that they were going to expropriate all land held by all landowners. And what's that mean? Big ranchers or, uh, or people who just own their own houses? I'm joking, but maybe they wouldn't have to shoot them. That's what I call a left-wing extremist. Uh, but I wouldn't call the others left-wing extreme. Biden is hardly a left-wing extremist, is he? The US president described them as left-wing extremists who were pushing a radical agenda on taxation, health care and the environment. And this, he's, he's started to speak out now because apparently some Democrats, who are obviously not left-wing extremists, are refusing to allow any more time for more witnesses. A lot of people are in America, I'm sure, are pretty fed up with this constant parade of people standing there uh, or sitting there being asked questions to which they give answers that mean nothing. Uh, the 73-year-old 
I wonder why they described it that way, said the Democrats' environmental plan would crush our farms and destroy our wonderful cows. Everything's wonderful to Trump. He also said his political opponents would raise taxes, confiscate guns and open borders. Maybe, maybe at least some of that. Looking to the election later this year, he said, this November, we're going to defeat the radical socialist Democrats that are right down the street. Look, they are going to defeat. If, if Trump remains healthy and doesn't start babbling about Martians or get caught, caught in a compromising position with a sheep, he's going to win. And he's going to win. Not Well, you know, they, they, <laughs> the interesting thing is they say elections are not won by the opposition. They're lost by the ruling party. And in this case, the Democrats have managed to turn it upside down, along with any idea of justice, democracy or political cooperation. Well, actually, Corbyn did the same thing. So I'm afraid we invented that first as well. The Democrats are losing it. They're they're losing it in the sense, in both senses. They're losing it because they've gone completely mad with weird and strange ideas and this constant pushing at the president when a lot of people feel that he is now the victim, the underdog. Can you imagine? Trump is the underdog. And then uh, they've showed themselves up as just spiteful and petty. And people tend not to vote for spiteful and petty people. Oh, this is something I didn't say before. Nigel Farage is the man who did this for us. He's the man who stopped this from becoming a Euro. And the British people owe him an enormous debt of gratitude for which he should, he could never be repaid, but for which he should certainly be honoured. Let's just hope that our government doesn't drop the ball because they've still accepted terms on this year that are not really to our advantage. And, uh, and they've left us vulnerable to bullying by the EU, uh, which it will do. All right, I'm going to see uh, whether there's so much paper crackling that you can't hear my voice on this video because the microphone is right there in front of the paper. If you want to donate or contact, the information will be rolling over the Granny Opteryx as I speak. Please like, subscribe and share because it does help with the algorithm. If you visit my channel on YouTube and one day discover that I've disappeared without warning, you'll still find me on BitChute or Minds. Just go to either of those platforms and do a search for Granny Opteryx. If you're already watching this on BitChute or Minds, good for you. Meanwhile, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember that you must keep checking the subscribe and bell icons because occasionally they reset. Till next time.